Britain's economy pulls out of recession at a faster pace than previously thought. Welcome to Market Insight. I'm Ramzan Karamali. GDP expanded in the first quarter of 2024 by 0.7%. That was above the initial 0.6% reading. But with Britain's less than a week away from going to the polls, real household disposable income, a measure of living standards, was 0.6% lower per head in the first quarter of 2024 than it was in the final quarter of 2019, the time of Britain's last general election. So what does this tell us about the overall strength of Britain's economy? Well, to help answer that and more, I'm joined by Hetel Mehta, Head of Economic Research at St James's Place. Hetel, thanks so much for joining us. So on the face of it, the GDP data looks to suggest that the UK economy is starting to gather pace. But what's your assessment of the overall health of it? So I think we are definitely seeing some positive momentum, and that's good news. Um, given that you know some of the elements that were revised up, such as consumer spending, suggest that there is still some underlying strength there, and we know unemployment is still still quite low. So we think that combined with credit conditions easing, that we should start seeing uh, some some good economic growth. But Q1, I think, was probably a little bit strong for to, to be able to sustain that. But for the for the rest of the year, we still think we'll see some some good kind of trend like growth. Now, the gap between French and German 10-year yields hit 85 basis points to date, the wider since 2012. Investors are clearly worried about the outcome of the elections in France this weekend. Should we expect those worries to grow even more in the coming days? So I think um, so it depends on what, what the different uh, politicians are going to say. But what we do know is that the French government is running a very big deficit, um, some of the more radical policies being discussed are very fiscal expansionary. And whether that, that tees us up for you know, a bit of conflict with the European Commission is, is obviously going to keep, keep investors, I think, nervous for, for a little while. Now, you mentioned the uncertainty around the results in France and the elections there. Um, and the euro is on track for its biggest monthly fall since January. So how much do you think that's got to do with the French elections or is it something else? I think when you look at the profile, that, that that move started not long after the ECB cut rates earlier in the month. So I think a large part of it is the fact that the ECB cut rates, but the Fed is not ready to cut yet. Um, and it's just the market adjusting to, to that timing gap. Um, so I think this is something that sits outside of uh, the French election dynamic. Now, just a little while ago, the PCE price index out of the US was released. It came in at 2.6%. It's the Fed's favoured measure of inflation. So will it encourage them to start easing monetary policy sooner rather than later? Well, it's definitely good news after the last couple of months of some uh, you know, more, more punchy numbers that might have been concerning the Fed. Um, when I look at the more dynamic measures such as three month annualised, um, that's still running you know, quite a bit above two uh, percent. That I think we need to see a bit more progress on that. Um, I wouldn't expect much, uh, much progress uh, in the next month or two, but hopefully um, you know, other indicators can also help so that by the autumn, uh, there'll be a bit more clarity. Now, now, looking ahead to next week, and we have Eurozone inflation data out, what are you expecting to see there? So I think on the Eurozone inflation numbers, um, we've had some of the individual country numbers they've been showing a bit of progress. So we would expect um, things to, to carry on improving very gradually. Uh, it's worth noting that the European Central Bank's own inflation expectations measure, um, three-year expectations, has, has continued to edge down, which is also going to be good news for, for the ECB. So do you think another ECB rate cut this summer might be on the cards? I think this summer might be a bit of a stretch, particularly if they don't get that clarity from where other central banks are going to be. The exchange rate channel is something that the ECB is going to be very sensitive to, particularly if that then starts to re-stimulate any inflationary pressure. So I would not expect another summer cut from the ECB, but maybe, maybe a bit later in the year. Hetzel Meta from St. James's Place. Many thanks for your thoughts. And that's Market Insights. Don't forget you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.